colors of the rainbow so pretty in the sky and also on the faces of the people passing by I see friends shaking hands saying how do you do all we're really saying is I love you I hear babies cry I watch them grow They know so much more you know Than you and I can ever know But I think to myself What a wonderful world Yes, I think to myself What a wonderful world Oh, even though What a wonderful world Good morning I want to start off by telling y'all Happy New Year. Happy New Decade. Think about it. Think a lot of times this time of year we think about last year and what's coming up. What about last decade? What did we do last decade? What are we going to do this coming decade? And so when Tony asked me to speak this morning, um, I decided on... I have been working with Mary Morrissey's program and the power of decision by Raymond Charles Parker. And so a lot of what I'm going to talk about comes from Mr. Parker and Mary Morrissey. But in this particular case, what, re what really inspired me for my talk this morning is Marilyn Conley. I want to publicly thank her because on October 20th, she did what Mary Morrissey said was the 10-minute sweaty talk. I think you talked for about 20, but okay. And that is, we, we make a joyful noise. We are here. Uh, the things for most of us that are here, we came here because traditional religion was not speaking to us spiritually. That's why I came. And the teachings we had as children, we knew there was something more. But she got me thinking. Have we, we have left behind, for most of us, we have left behind, or at least are working on leaving behind, the teachings we've had up until now. But have we truly left behind the way of thinking that goes along with those teachings? It's not one size fits all. Whatever your religious beliefs were before, you left that way of thinking because many traditional religions are kind of a one size fits all. You think this way, that's it, period, in the discussion. And we would like to think, or I would like to think, as a member of unity and a more metaphysical world that I have left that behind. But after Marilyn's talk, I got reflecting on it and maybe that way of thinking, but not necessarily always that way of acting. Um, Barker divides it into four categories depending on who you're studying with and what program you're with. His basic ones are to decide to be happy, to decide to, to live richly, to decide to be healthy, decide to be creative. And so in the interest of time, I'm going to keep it to those four. <laughs> we are spiritual beings. What the, the light that comes through us, our thoughts, 
That's what makes you you. It's not your body. It's not your height. It's not your birth date. It is your thoughts and your ideas. We are spiritual beings living a human experience. And so we have to deal with human things. But our ideas and our thoughts. Barker believes, and I've come to agree with him, that every single moment of every single day is a decision. We get to decide that your thoughts are going to come to you. And yes, the negative ones, the positive ones. But when those thoughts come to you, you get to decide how you react. You get to decide in that moment what direction you want to take your life. And those exact thoughts, for me, my decision is not going to be the same decision that you make. You have to make it for yourself. You can put out to the universe what you want. It will send it back. But if you are not having receiving thoughts, or you, your thoughts are locked into a, a certain way, then you're not really ready to receive. And so you pick your thoughts. So, decide to be happy. One of the things about deciding to be happy is oftentimes I find myself wanting to make you happy and wanting to make you happy and wanting to make you happy. I can't do that. Can't do it. Can't make somebody else happy. Everyone, it is an individual choice. Do you choose to be happy? There is a book. I like reference material. Dark Nights of the Soul. And since you notice, there's no sticky notes coming out of it. That means I haven't read it yet. <laughs> I was introduced, Tony introduced me to that book. And through my many blessings, I am saving it for when I have a dark night of my soul. Because part of the human experience is that up and down. And everybody will eventually have that. It's how to get out of that. And that when you have those dark times, when I've had those dark times, not saying, no dark times. I'm not saying. You know what? You need to embrace those dark times. I have, I can't be a party girl all the time. <laughs> so if you know, if you or someone you know is in that dark place, embrace it. Because whatever your thoughts are, they are thoughts. They're coming at you all the time, every single second of every single day. Take those thoughts. Embrace them. Know it's a part of it. And you have a decision to make. Accept those dark thoughts. Or look for that one little tiny thing that can be positive in every situation. Know that when someone is in that dark place, they're not ready to receive the most joyful noise. They're not. They're, uh, they don't want to hear about, well, just think happy thoughts and you'll be happy. Because sometimes that's true. But a lot of times it's not. If you are in such a dark place, that you stayed in bed all day yesterday. If you got up and got out of bed this morning, took a shower, showed up, showed the gratitude in that. You were better than you were yesterday. Show the gratitude in the ability to just take that step, that one baby step. Tomorrow you might even get up and take a shower and go to work. But look at what you have now. Look in the moment 
and know that even in those darkest times, um, the quest, the wanting to look, sometimes it's just wanting to look for the good. Maybe you can't find it, but want to look for the good. Barker also talks about satisfaction and happiness. Most of us are satisfied with our life. It's not just, it's not perfect. We have our good days and bad days, jobs, whatever. I've added that to that, my, me personally, joy. That for most days of my life, I'm satisfied. I took care of my business. Everything happened the way it was supposed to. You know, there are some days that are happy. But what I personally have come to believe, don't just look to be happy. Don't limit yourself by saying, I'm going to be happy today. I'm going to be joyful today. I am going to spread my greatest joy to the most people. I'm standing up here. It's not that easy. You, trust me, some days. <laughs> Being joyful in the moment is a great challenge. And I do not always succeed. Know that when Marilyn was talking, that she talked about people that felt like they were less than because these people are all over here talking about how easy it is. It's not. You need to stretch yourself. You need to make decisions. And in those moments, those decisions you make will take you to where you need to be. Not. I have a Bible quote. I was excited. <clears throat> This is a day which the Lord hath made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Psalms 118.24 Rejoice. Be glad. Be gladder about some things than others, but rejoice. Be glad. Be happy. Be joyful. That's what our message really is here. Decide to live richly. When I first was reading that richly, money came to mind. Because there is the whole theory behind money and the freedom it gives you and how different people think about money, what your parents taught you about money. Mary Morrissey taught uh, in her teaching said when she was growing up, uh, they didn't have much money. And so she was raised to believe you can have love or you can have money, but you can't have both. But guess what? You can have both. It's about decisions, the choices we make. There is no one size fits all. If we did a survey in this room, how much money is enough money? My belief in how much money I need is different from yours. So once again, if you are someone you know, if they're facing eviction, foreclosure, their utilities have been disconnected, I do not recommend handing them a copy of To Think and Grow Rich by Napoleon Hill. They are not ready to receive that. It's an excellent book with a lot of information. But when somebody is not ready to receive, you have to be ready to receive. And so what we share and what we say, we can say anything we want. If that other person is not ready to receive, you just have to keep looking for the right words, looking for the thing that will touch their heart. Not what touches your heart, what will touch their heart. Sometimes it seems like I go in these great leaps that I'm doing my vision board, I'm studying, I'm journaling, I'm reading. Leanne's singing to me. Uh, if anybody hasn't seen the video Gratitude, 
by Nemo Patel. I strongly encourage you to listen to it on YouTube. And don't just listen to it, watch it. Because our own Leanne Atherton was a guest singer on that. So everything's not a giant step. But once again, take those baby steps. Not sure how you're going to pay the rent? Get up and go to work. Maybe that day's pay is not enough to pay the rent, but it's what you have control of in the moment. And take those moments and look at those moments and decide. Mary Morrissey says, decide what you can do now with what you've got. Don't worry about what you can do tomorrow or the next day. What can you do now with what you've got? Decide what is the next best thing for you. Because what's good for you may not be good for me. A bunch of little baby steps turn into one giant leap eventually. And once you start leaping, they come faster and faster. So this morning when I got up <clears throat> and I was practicing in my mind and getting ready, I uh, turned on the coffee pot. I went in the bathroom and I turned on the light switch. And the fixture in my bathroom has four lights in it. Three of them came on. Okay. So I said a word that I can't say here now. But then I thought, Notice what I'm noticing. I'm noticing one burnout light bulb. I chose to notice three lit bulbs, which means I could take a shower and get dressed and be here. And so I was happy I had three lit light bulbs. But my most joyous moment was coming out of the bathroom. There was a pot of hot coffee waiting on me. That coffee pot worked exactly like it was supposed to. And I decided in that moment, it was a joyous moment. So when you look for the gratitude, it is real easy to look for the burnout light bulb. But look around you. For every burnout light bulb, there is many things to show gratitude for. A de decisions. That's what I'm talking about. Decisions on where you want to focus. Gratitude in all things. Do you know how many people would have been grateful for running water? Simple running water. Not hot running water. Not light so they can see the hot one running water. And certainly not a big old pot of hot coffee that there are so many things in our life that it, it's what we know there are so many things in our life to show gratitude for and gratitude is the road to receiving decide to be healthy that's his third one And for this one, health versus healthy. Are, th are they really the same thing? For me, health is my spirit. I feel health when I can truly and honestly say all is well with my soul. That my spirit is in a good place. Healthy is the body, is our human form. So what I would say about healthy is if you know or are somebody with a serious or chronic illness, do not go to somebody who is seriously ill and tell them the story of Mildred Fillmore. They don't want to hear it. It is a miraculous story. I have read it, and it is truly miraculous. But somebody 
who is seriously ill, in a lot of pain, who can barely make it through the day, doesn't want to hear about the miraculous healing 100 years ago. And so know that, once again, are we trying to be a one-size-fits-all religion? Is what worked for Mildred going to work for me or you? Don't know. You have to be ready to receive. And for some people have received her message and have been healed by it. Other people need a different message. Say it a different way. All the research in the world about positive attitudes laugh more. When I am standing here in my healthy body telling somebody who is in an unhealthy body, oh, just laugh more. Yeah, that'll make you better. Don't want to hear it. Not ready to receive. It is about decisions, though. Each and every one of us, in every single moment, it's a decision. Do you decide to dwell on your aches and pains? Do you look at the allergy report hourly to see if the cedar level's going down? Right? And so it's a choice. Or you have a decision to do what you can with what you have in the moment. Cedar level's not going down. How about a Benadryl? Okay? It's a decision to make. You have a decision to make what you can do in this moment. And to be healthy means different things to different people. Go to the doctor if you're sick. I've had some recent experiences with a couple of people, and it's like, uh, well, did he go to the doctor? No. Well, I don't want to hear him crying about being sick. If he's that sick, he needs to go to the doctor. If in this moment, your human experience, your body, you're unhappy with it, you are where God wants you to be right now. You are perfect in every way. There is a lesson to be learned from the past and how you got to where you are right now. But moving forward, no. There are decisions to be made. Choices to be made. The past... Some of my personal habits, uh, my DNA tells me that in the future, I don't have much longer. But that's what the past says. I make decisions. I make decisions in the present. I choose whether I exercise or not. I choose the things I put in my body. I can do that today. We can do that is a decision you can make in this moment, right now. The future? Isn't the future just tomorrow and the next day and the next day and tomorrow this will be the past? And so if you make your decisions now, don't decide how healthy you're going to be 25 years from now. Decide how healthy you're going to be today. And by being healthy today in the moment, spirit will lead you to what kind of health you should have 10 years from now. Happy new decade. So living in the moment, living in the now, deciding what's best now, that's all we can do. Does it mean we make good decisions? Not necessarily. Some of them are good, some of them not so good. Just know, nobody ever deliberately makes a mistake. Nobody ever deliberately decides to do something wrong. All you can really do is make your decision. Once it plays out, go, hmm, 
no, I'm going to make a different decision. Or, mm, that was a good one. I'll just keep right on going. His fourth one is decide to be creative. And this is the one I kind of struggle with, with through the reading and his teachings. And it's really the one I've had the hardest time with through my time uh, in my metaphysical studies. And the reason for that is I come from a very creative family. They sing, they dance, they paint, they draw. Really? Not me. I'm logical. I need a logical plan. I need an order to do things. I make li I'm a list maker. Not only do I make it, I have to check them off. And once the list is made, I have to check them off in the order I wrote them down. I can't go, well, I'll load the dishwasher and then I'll do a load of laundry. No, load the dishwasher, wipe down the kitchen. And so, for me, this has been one of my biggest challenges. But what I am learning is to focus on the what. What do I want? Um, not the how. Um, I spoke before, I'm living in an apartment community, a 55 plus apartment community, but my vision board from like three years ago, I envisioned living someplace that had a pool and a gym and a large dining area and plenty of space. I knew what I wanted. The how came to me as an apartment complex. And I can tell y'all, I love living there because in that whole plan of that whole big house with plenty of room for lots of company and to have church events and stuff, it's this or something better, God. And you know what my something better is? I clean one bathroom, one kitchen, one bedroom. I don't have to clean anything. And so for me, that was my something more, something better. When I focus on what I want, when I decide what I want and let go of the how, so many times it comes to me but it comes to me in a way that I could never imagine. And so seek out the creative side, but open yourself to receive because spirit knows the right way for you to get it. For those of y'all who don't know, I've never really been a church goer and I haven't really read a lot of the Bible and so, um, I'm real proud that I have some biblical quotes. <clears throat> be conformed, not, be not conformed to this world. Romans 12, 2. I really like this one. I wish I'd have known this one all my life because basically the world conforms to the original thinkers. That when there is an idea out there and everybody's told it has to be this way, right? Then everybody's marching along, right? It is the one who steps out and says, I'm not going to think that way. It is the Wright brothers who said, we can fly. It is Thomas Edison who said, let there be light. And he tried, what, a thousand times, if not more. But he knew it could be done. He just had to figure out. So don't conform to what people say you should be or say how you can act. Open your mind. Look in your heart. Look at spirit. Look at the right of the situation. Not what you're told to do. But what spirit tells you is the right thing to do. So, yes, I'm coming in on time. Uh, just a few closing thoughts. 
For me, this week, I've done a lot of reflection. And so a few things that I have decided I'm going to do different in my life, which once again, I've been up here telling, telling everybody, just because I'm doing it doesn't mean you have to do it. It's suggestions. So here we go. To emerge from my cocoon of complacency, com, com, where's your mother when I need her? Complacency, complacency, satisfaction. Satisfaction is unacceptable. I decide to live my most joyful life in this moment, every moment. I decided to t continue to seek the wisdoms of other, the wisdom of others. Marilyn spoke to me. You really spoke to me, hon. Um, Tony, up here, so many, so many of you, and you know who you are, right, have shared so much with me. But I decided, I will let spirit guide me on what I'm going to pay attention to and what I'm not going to pay attention to. That my spirit, spirit tells me what I am ready for. And if somebody is sharing their wisdom, and it, and it doesn't speak to me, that's okay. Keep seeking the wisdom. Look unto yourself, you as, as the perfect human being, as the perfect spirit you are, that you are where you need to be right now, and that as long as you're seeking to find your true spirit. Listen to what people have to say. Pick what you want. Throw the rest away, maybe a month from now. Somebody will say it to you in a slightly different way. And then it will speak to you. I decide not to waste my time and energy on fear, anger, guilt. I forgive myself. We t do a lot of talking about forgiveness work. And uh, I know a lot of people who have had success in letting go of horrible, horrible life experiences. But you know what? I am a spirit. I am not perfect. And a big part of forgiveness is forgiving yourself. And I decided I'd spend more time forgiving myself. I decide. I decide for me. One more. Individuality necessitates responsibility. Uh, since I'm living in a community now where I used to live by myself, and I mean, I worked and stuff, but I have a lot of contact with a lot more people these days. And the whole accountability. You get to make your decisions. But you make those decisions, and you own those decisions. And it's not, well, that didn't work out because she did this. Or he did that. Or somebody hurt my feelings. You make your decisions. But as a part of making your decisions and choosing your life path, there's responsibility. There is accountability. And so if you make that decision, not you, if I make that decision and it winds up not being the greatest decision in the world, I look to my spirit because my spirit is going to let me know where I went wrong in my thinking. And my spirit will show me what my other options might have been that I did not know at the time. And then I will make another decision on what my next path is. And if your path gets all wiggly woggly, so does everybody else's. Thank you so much for being here today. 
I appreciate y'all listening to me. Happy New Year and Happy New Decade. If everybody could gently close your eyes. Feel your feet on the ground, the chair against your back, the clothes against your skin. Your skin where nothing is touching. Feel the light come down. Feel the light enter you and go through you and spread through all parts of you. For the light is your spirit. The light is the real you. Your human body is just another rearrangement of the infinite universe that is out there. We think of the, the limits. There are no limits. Everything around you vibrates vibrates with the energy and the light coming into you your spirit reaches out there is no limit spirit reaches every place the light shining through you it's waiting for you it's there for you the lights is your thoughts the light brings you ideas of what could be, what will be. There are so many things. The mind moves so fast. The light moves through you swiftly that you must pick and choose. But know that the, the light is your spirit that your thoughts, whatever they may be, are a part of you, that the light's to be embraced and cherished. And whatever that light is at this moment within you, be it dim or bright, embrace it, love it, show it gratitude, because that light is you. That light is the I am. That light is in all of us. Take a deep breath. Let it out slowly. Feel that light. Know that you right now, in this moment, are the perfect spirit. You are where you need to be. You are learning from that light. Your spirit is growing. When you're ready, come back to us. Open your eyes. Make a joyful noise. Make, hey, hey, come on, y'all. Joyful noise. Yay! <laughs>